Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. In this episode of our drawer making series, we're going to take that old drawer front that we screwed up on, take it off on the bandsaw. I'm going to walk you through a little bit of tune up on the bandsaw and then get it ready to put on the new drawer that we made. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this one. So ran out of furniture, but I thought we'd keep up with the tradition and show you some of my wood hinge boxes. We'll start with a small one and work our way up. Actually, we'll start with the big one and work our way down because this will explain it better. So if you haven't seen this before, it's quite unique. Not the box. This is made out of a piece of uh, walnut, dovetailed corners. But what's neat is the hinge. So this is my wooden hinge. And it completely disappears. If you do it right, you can't see it at all when it's closed. And then when you open it, it starts to appear. And on the inside, <coughs> it's nice and clean. Right? Now that one is a 3 8 inch diameter, just remember that. Here's one, made, and this is black walnut, here's one that's made out of a piece of Clara walnut for the lid, which is burl, which has its own problem, and black walnut on the sides. Now that's the difference between oxidation and no oxidation, this one's been sitting in a cupboard. Uh, that one, by the way, has a piece of cedar, native cedar, solid wood bottom. This one has a piece of Baltic birch plywood. So here, this one is a quarter of an inch. And as you can see, the hinge is well hidden until you start to open it up. Now that's a one, two, three, four, that's a five piece hinge. You can, you can do whatever you want. This one is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a seven piece, it's always an odd number. Now the problem with this one is that because it's burl, it doesn't have any grain direction. So it expands this way, it expands that way, and certain times of the year you cannot get the lid open. So my mistake. What I do here in the front is I just use a, a little disc sander that attaches in a court and a drill, and I use that to just uh, cut out that little area so that you can have a finger recess to get in order to get hold of the lid. And I always break the joints with a V groove. That way, if they don't line up perfectly or if the lid moves one way or the other, it doesn't show. If that was a square edge on a square edge and it moved ever slightly, it stands out like a sore thumb. But with the V-groove, it looks intentional. But it's a cute little box. like it. This is a little more complicated. This one is made out of Gaboon Ebony and Bird's Eye Maple. This one is hand dovetailed. Bird's Eye Lid. And the uh, actual ba the dowel, again, is made out of bird's eye. You can see the bird's eyes in the dowel. This is a five-pin hinge. No, it's not. No, it's a seven-pin hinge. Really cool when it opens up and appears. And on this one, I put, uh, it's, the, the lid is made out of Baltic birch, but I... Not uh, lid. I, I'm sorry. The bottom is made out of Baltic birch. I put leather on the inside, so it's... Well, it goes nicely with the, go, it contrasts nicely with the bird's eye and it also looks nice with the ebony. And I never put a finish on the inside because I don't want the smell. You have to finish the lid so that your drying will be, or your moisture absorption or giving off will be the same based on the fact that both surfaces are, are coated. It won't prevent it from happening, but it'll slow it so it's at the same rate. You don't end up having a lid that, that uh, cups half the year and not on the other half. That one was made in 2013. This one was made in 2011. This one was made, I don't know when. And this one is the smallest. This is a piece of uh, tulip wood, Brazilian tulip wood with bird's eye. This one I just stamped, has a pine bottom. And this, I, I used to make and sell these as business card boxes. That'll fit a business card. But when I did the business card box, what I would do is take a little piece of, uh, uh, what was that stuff? Ribbon. And I'd fasten it underneath there and lay it here and up. So that when it would stick up here, when you put your cards in, you would just pull on the ribbon and it would lift the card up so you could access it. And I, I like, as you can tell, I like to have it so that the lid comes down between the two ends. I think it frames the lid nicely by having the contrasting woods. It allows you to get it nice and flush and neat looking right here. It hides the end of the hinge so you don't see it. This is actually a finger joint as our, actually the two, the two, two with finger joints and two with hand cut dovetails. Neat. Now, if you'd like to make them yourself, by the way, oh, here's one that's partially open so you can see. 
So this is just a this was just a sample one that I could show people how it's done. So you start off, of course you build your box, but um, you have to route a groove, and we actually supply these now too because I find them to be the most accurate in terms of being actual half round. So this is called a core box bit or a round nose. So it cuts a true half round. And you put that in a router table, which is the easiest way to do it. And you have to cut what amounts to being a portion of that circle or a radius on the back of your box. And with it out before it being assembled, if your, your bit is sticking up like that out of your router table, your fence is covering part of it, so there's only a part of it exposed, and you run the box back over the bit like this. So you can see how that, that, how that cut. So you have part of your bit expo uh, covered, but you want to make sure that you, you actually bring this little lip right here comes down around the back side of the curve. Okay? You'll see why in a moment. You want to have less than half of the circle in, in, the, in, in this direction. Then you take your lid with the exact same setting. You take your lid and you run your lid over this way, just like that. And again, you have a little bit less than half so that when you put it together, and before I get to putting it together, let me show you, this is the hinge. So this is made out of a piece of cherry dowel. I make my own dowel and that's all in our, in our wood hinge uh, video, wood hinge box video, show you how to make the dowel. The dowel has to be round. And by the way, since I have this in my hand, I'll show you what I mean. You want a router bit that gives you a true half round so that when it's sitting in, when the uh, dowel is sitting in the uh, groove, it makes contact all the way around so that you end up having a really good glue joint. And the problem is that a lot of, a lot of uh, core box bits that you buy are pointed at the top so you don't get that true round shape. So we make this out of uh, what, the matching species. In this case, it either could have been made out of, it could have been made out of cherry to match the lid or it could have been made out of bird's eye to match the box. Either way, you cut it into pieces. This is all explained in the video. I'm just trying to give you a short version. Cut it into pieces, but then what you have to do is you have to drill a hole in the end of each piece that in this case is a sixteenth of an inch in diameter, but it has to be absolutely centered. If it isn't centered, when the two pieces turn, they'll turn off center and that'll wreck your box. Now there's a little piece of, uh, we use welding rod. Uh, it's stuck in there, I don't know if I can get it out or not. I can't. Little piece of welding rod in between each section. That's only, you're, you're, seeing, a little, you're seeing about half of it, so there's about that same amount stuck into this piece. And that's all you need, just for a pivot pin. I have, the reason I have that pen line on there is so that when I put this back, to, when, I, yeah, when you put it in place to glue it in, the whole thing has to be done at the same time. And I want the grain to align, so that's why the pen line is on there. And what you'll notice on here is I have little pen marks, and they represent the joint lines. And what I would do when before assembling is... Uh, depending on which section it's going to be glued to. So either way, I like to do it. The last piece of the dowel is glued to the bottom. The next piece of the dowel is glued to the top. The middle piece, in this case, is glued to the bottom. Next piece to the top. Next piece to the bottom. So that's a five-piece hinge. And you, if it was a seven-piece, same layout, only you'd end with the last piece being glued to the bottom on both ends and the opposite piece being glued to the top. Now, it's a little secret here. What I do is if it's being glued here but not here, I take wax and a, and a uh, Q-tip and I wax from here over to the next glue line. That's so that if any glue squeezes out, and it usually will, it won't get in here and seize your joint on you. And on the lid, I do the same thing. If it's going to be glued here but not there, then I wax from the joint line over. Same thing in the middle, same thing on the opposite end. Put the whole thing in place. So I put it so that the pen mark is on the outside, <clears throat> like so. So that's glued now. Drop that down in. You'd have glue on the appropriate pieces here. You'd set that on there like so. And then you would clamp it all across there. Now you see why you have to have part of the arc coming around the back side so that when I eventually flush this off, 
so that it's nice and clean like that. You don't expose those pivot pins. Very important, obviously. Tons of fun. I haven't made 2,000 of these, but I've made over 1,000. Used to actually survive from selling them. So here's, if you want to try this yourself, we, uh, I invented this little jig way back in 1986, I think. And uh, we've been selling them for probably, oh, better than 20 years. This is the latest kit, which is uh, nice because on this kit, you get two, um, two holders. This holder has an eighth inch drill bit. And this holder is made for a 16th inch drill bit. So your drill bit goes in like so. And the amount that it sticks up above this threaded area is how deep it's going to drill into your wood. And when you get it where you want it, you tighten it up with the set screws. And then you have four different receivers. This is a three quarter. This is a half inch. This is a three eighths inch. And this is a quarter inch. Whichever size you're working with, you take that receiver and you screw it on there like that. This piece chucks up in your cordless drill. So while this is spinning, actually I should have put the quarter inch on so that I can show you better. Now, if I had a piece of quarter inch dowel, I'll steal it from here. Take your quarter inch dowel. <clears throat> and while this is spinning, you push your dowel in here. So the first thing it's going to do is going to grab hold of the dowel and prevent it from wobbling. And as you continue to push it in, it, you can see in the hole, it engages the drill. It drills the hole. The exit holes get the sawdust out so that you're not having to stop and clean it out each time. And you come out with a perfectly centered hole. It's really cool the way it works. And I use, uh, if I'm doing something large, <coughs> excuse me, a hope chest or, or a, actually, well, we'd use a half inch on that too. Any big piece of furniture, I would use a three quarter. So in the three quarter, I use a half inch, half inch, uh, pardon me, an eighth inch pivot pin. And I might even use that on the half inch. And then I use the 16th inch on the two smaller sizes, but you can do whatever you want with that. We, uh, we have all the, we have a kit actually that has all the drill bits for those four sizes. And then you can buy it. We even sell the welding rod if you can't find it yourself. But if you're looking for something to do for uh, Christmas gifts or wedding gifts or whatever, that doesn't take, I mean, if you took all the pieces in that box, better yet, you took all the pieces of wood in that box, there isn't anything in there that you wouldn't have thrown into the firewood pile. Well, we turned into a nice little box that uh, makes a great gift. Anyway, I'll leave a link on there where you can see uh, all of the stuff. And if you want, have at it. Knock yourself out. All right, let me get this stuff put away and then we'll get started on our drawer. Give me a second. Okay, not nervous, but really can't afford to mess this up. Now I'm gonna go in there and cut. I'd actually like to go in, and I will, I promise. We're done, I'm gonna plane that off and just see how that repair worked. But we gotta go in there and I wanna cut just in the, in the ends of the uh, tails so that all of this is left. So I thought I'd use, I, I don't think I've actually used this new to me bandsaw for anything yet so this will be a first and the blade on it is fresh is that the lock jake mm -hmm. gee many christmas hey, did i ever show them that yeah you saw that i think that's cool they've, they've got this weight that goes from here on a cord a piece of steel wire around a pulley over here into a big weight down here so when you lift this up as heavy as it is it's counterbalanced. Now, I gotta make sure that this thing is uh, perfectly aligned, and you know what? It isn't. And I say that because the guides need to have a little work on them. But I'm gonna try a, I'm going to try a, a block of wood and try slicing it off, A, to see if the bandsaw fence is set up, if this thing is running true to the fence, because I don't wanna find that out when I'm uh, cutting that piece of cherry. And I'm going to go and do a little bit of work on that first. So give me a second to just check that out. I'll turn the camera back on when we're doing the test cut to see, but I want to go through and do a little cleanup on that. And I don't want to do it right now in film. 
Okay, let me show you what we did. The guides, first of all, weren't perfectly lined up. Now, I've never, I've never had this type of a guide on a bandsaw before where they're angled, but we had to take these off and grind them so that they were <coughs> at the end of them. The end of the guide was at the same slope that matched the blade. And we have just a little bit of clearance in there, not much. You can see some light. Had to move the whole thing back because being a quarter inch blade, it's going to flex a fair bit in that direction. Now, the thrust, bear, thrust bearing top and bottom help prevent that, but you're going to have some. And you want to make sure that your teeth, or pardon me, your guides are just at the base of the gullet, this area in between the teeth. If it uh, allows the tooth to go in there, it's going to affect the set of your blade. So we had to move this whole apparatus back a little bit to expose a little more blade. Did the same thing top and bottom. Then we went in and we checked it for square to the table. And it wasn't quite, so there's a stop over here. We took the time to set it up while we were there. So we loosened that, got the table set in place. Now, I want these guys to just clear the work. I, I got a piece of cherry. I squared off, I squared off the uh, face and the bottom edge. So I can, I'm gonna, if I'm going to use cherry, then I'm going to try it on cherry. We'll set it up, make a cut, and see if it's, the blade is cutting true to the fence. But I've got a smaller square because when I bring this guide down, there's a chance that that may throw it out a little bit. Okay, lock that. And then we'll just see if that is still indeed. Ah, it's not. Yeah, I think that actually moved in that little bit of... What? Slide it over the throat. But. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Is it is it hitting? Where's Willie? I'll set it right on the throat plate. Well, that's not even that's not even close to where we want. Uh, I take that back. It is pretty close. I think that'll work. So let's go in there and set that. I'm going to set it right off of the right <clears throat> set of measuring. I'm going to set it right off of this drawer front. Should you make that other piece of cherry the same height? No, I will if it isn't. No, I don't want to take a ton. Of, I don't want to have to take a ton of material off. So I'm going to get it close, but I got to clean it up so that it's got a, a good. Uh, Smooth surface to glue. Give me a rough idea, Jake. Good. So when I do this, I'm looking at the teeth that are sticking out on that side. Uh, we can take more than that. You can even take more than that. I... Well, we'll know after we try the test piece. That's definitely too much. No, that's good. If, that, if, if it's running true, that's good. Now, we haven't got our dust collecting hooked up to this yet. You could hook the vacuum. And that'll though. clear. Yeah. It, you think that fits? It's two and a half. That's about the same feel on both sides, which simply means you don't have the blade cutting, or, you know, the blade's not aiming more to one side than the other. You know we have a half inch blade, right? Yeah, I know, but it restricts what you can do with it otherwise. Could move that over just to... 
Well, based on how deep those grooves are. There. Hate cutting my own dovetails up even when I screw up. That started to veer off on me. So there's why you don't want to undercut too much. See what happens? If you, had, if you end up taking off more material, more so over here, then you end up exposing where that undercut was. Should we plane that off real fast and see? I'll do it later. Okay, so this. Check your thicknesses. Huh? Like how much did it wander? Well, it didn't. It just. It. I allowed it to drift out accidentally, and it went in and just took a little extra pass right there. But it's not deeper than that, so it's not going to matter. I just want to make sure I've got this. Well, I've already got my markings on there anyway. You do. Yeah. What does that mean? It means it goes in like that. Well, you want to write on it a little extra obvious? You mean that isn't extra obvious enough? Oh, never mind. You got the top right on there. No, 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 no. Just like that. You've got top right written in the corner. I know what I got, but that doesn't look... Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Look at that end. That, that matches precisely. Better after all this work. Okay. Now, um, I'm just wondering if there's a cup in this. If there is, I got to fix it. Now, there is quite a bit of a cup. Quite a bit. Shoot. I should be able to push that out. I was thinking about. Uh, using the double-sided tape to f glue it down to a piece of uh, one-inch MDF while I plane it. But the only problem with that is that that stuff is stick so bad. It actually, I did that the other day with something and it actually tore the wood apart when I was taking, trying to get the joint apart. Let's just try and see what happens under the weight of the plane. Where's my other bench dog? Can you use the, uh, you have that planing board. Yeah. For thin material. I think what I'm going to do is just clamp this on and plane against it. You can do it with one. If you add this. No, move it ahead. No, move it ahead. That's good there. And then clamp it there. So that the force goes against the dog and that'll keep it from that should keep it from twisting. Thank <laughs> you. 
reaching for my magic plain wax. Luthy, commercial time. Yeah, come on. that jumping over right there. What a ton of work to save a piece of wood. That's going to end up being too thick, Jake. I'm going to catch up. I think I'm heavier on that end. That edge. do I need okay that, I've got I've got based on that end lap I've, I've got plenty I just want to keep an eye on it make sure I'm not getting introducing a taper and I am so I'm thicker up here just like I thought I was um, I need something thinner smaller than that. And I appreciate some of the ideas that have come through. In fact, I should acknowledge this. I, somebody gave me the idea for the uh, double-sided tape. That was great. Somebody else gave me an idea too. Oh, uh, just recently, somebody mentioned, shouldn't we have a uh, a little, um, what do you call it? A little ledge right on here so that your papers don't slide off. Another great idea, and I'm going to put that on. I thought about holly, but that nah, stands out too much. That'll have to be a piece of solid cherry. So my point is, if you have comments to make, particularly constructive ones, love to hear them. And I will try to do a better job of acknowledging who it was that gave the comment. Just requires me to do a little more homework before we film, but our days have been so hectic this last few months that we're lucky to get the time to film, never mind having a lot of extra prep time. Now, let's just check this. So we're 154 on that side. Not bad, 152. 
142, 142. So this side is thinner. So what I'll do, and that's the bad, and interesting enough, this is the side where I skipped a few times. So what I'm gonna do is, Jake, yeah, you got it, all right, and I'm just gonna take a couple of partial passes up here. Can you put a finger on both? Try not to take your finger off. All right, now I'm gonna go full length a couple of times and check it again. Thirty-eight, forty, forty-five, forty-four. Still heavy up here. than trying to measure the tape. 42, 41, 38, 40. So just another two passes up there. Uh, it's getting pretty close. I'm gonna go back to plain and full length. This I'm getting, I don't have a whole lot more to remove. This I do. What I want to do, there's a little bit of undercutting that took place, but as long as I'm clean right out here on the end, which is where the joint's going to be, I don't, I'm not worrying about this stuff inside. Yeah, that's good on both sides, so let's check that and see. 38, 39. 35, 35. Should you take a little more off of that one end again? 35. This is the 38 end, right? 39, 38. Was I planing this way? Yeah, I think so. Huh? I think so. So yeah, right, right, okay. So. Okay, no plane tracks, so it's a good flat surface if I can use it. 35, 36, 35, 34, excellent. We can deal with the two thou variants. Okay. How are we for time? 34. Now, I hate to say goodbye to our trusty handle. You probably need to heat it up. I probably need to cut it off and then plane, the, plane it down. Um, so this is going to fit on there like that. We gotta figure out a way to hold everything perfectly in place. <clears throat> oh, 
You know what? Just just for the sake of it, I because I want to. I mean, we put so much work into it. Even if it means we don't get past this today, I want to. Uh, Jake, where's my piece of MDF? Here it is. I want to plane that. I don't think I need it. That'll hold it. I just want to plane this uh, repair job and see how it turned out. It's this one right here. waste this piece of holly. I'll do something with it. Okay. Uh, I gotta take a I gotta take another pass just to get rid of the glue on this pin. And then I'll have Jake focus in on that and you can judge it for yourself. Need more light? Okay, so that's the one where we went in and had to replace the pins. You never would have known. It's too bad we didn't get to use it. Uh, it'll grow up to be something. All right, let's get that. Let's get that handle off. I knew that stuff was going to hold on that well. I may have designed them. It's not going to fit in there, is it? Shoot. Put a piece of... Yeah, it'll work. Other way. I think you can heat it up. Yeah. Uh, I'll just, I'll just give it a whack. Now what I want to find out is how much larger the this piece is from that actual drawer front. So we got a little bit of room front up top to bottom. We shouldn't have any room side to side. So what we'll do I think take a couple of pieces of uh, MCP which is melamine covered panel. The reason is because it's cheap and uh, glue won't stick to it. And we'll glue them on like this and that'll hold it in that direction. And um, <clears throat> we, in order to match the grain, we want the bottom to be flush, right? Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter. But we'll make the bottom flush. It's probably better to have the top flush. Why do you say that? Well, because you will see the top line up with the grain more than you'll see the bottom line up with the uh, grain. I don't know if I agree. Either way, you're going to cut some off, right? Yeah, I would rather it be cut off the bottom. I feel like that'll, that would be I would be rather it be cut off at the bottom. I, I would rather, I'd rather it be flush at the bottom, and then everything is going to be the same right up until here for that last little bit that's missing. Right? It would be the if same you took it off, way. if you took, no, it, no, it wouldn't. It, well, it's understandable here because your drawer is going to be a little bit narrower than the opening. I'm, I'm, I'm ranking, I'm pulling rank on that one. So flush at the bottom. Flush at the bottom, flush on both sides. And then clamp that in place. Now just get some idea what it's going to look like. That's okay. How much time? We're at 41. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it there because I will, uh, it's going to take a while to get everything, everything ready. I'll do it on our next one. So just a quick recap of what we're going to do next time. We will uh, prepare this, clamp that in, and we'll probably let it set. So we'll probably uh, do the episode in two parts. And then when, once that's done, we got to come back in, flush it off, get the final fit on the drawer, and then put the bottom in place. Once we put the bottom in place, and that's going to be the end of it for this series, because the rest of it is uh, all the uh, stuff we do on the membership side, which is going in and figuring how we're going to address the bottom as far as opening it up. So just a couple of episodes of this left. See you tomorrow.